If you have a large library of games on your Mr. FPGA, then having a faster way to play your games would be a great time saver. Well, thanks to Wizzo and Gareth Jones, we can take this card right here and code it with your favorite game, tap it onto a reader, and boom, your game is loaded. This is possible through NFC, and I'm going to show you how to set this up. Before I show you how to implement this, let's talk about the use cases. It's really cool to have your favorite games readily available without having to scroll through a long list. Having a tag encoded to play a random game will help you find something new to play. Playing on original hardware is great, but sometimes it's just more convenient to use emulation, whether it be software or hardware. You can still make use of those physical games by adding some tags to your most played games and tap the cart or box to a reader to run that game. This is perfect for when friends and family are visiting. They can just take a look at your collection, check out the info for the box, and if they're interested, tap the game to play it. No need for them to browse a list of games with no info on what it's about. This can also work great for arcade cabinets. I've seen videos where people use NFC tags to tap an area of the arcade cabinet and the desired game will be loaded. Having a tag encoded to play a random game is super handy for those times when you just want to try to do something new quickly. I also think having a tag for a recent game I'm playing but necessary won't play it again in the future is also helpful to have. If you have Nintendo Amiibos, you can also assign games to them. On one of my setups, I put the NFC reader inside a Genesis case made for a Raspberry Pi. I had to cut some plastic inside the case to make the reader fit, but it works pretty well when I was done. These are the use cases I can think about. Let me know of any other ways you would use this. The tags you buy will most likely be plain white tags, and if you write a lot of them, it's going to be pretty confusing figuring out what game was written to what tag. So here are some ways to give each tag a unique look. You can use a label maker to print out labels to stick on the tag. I actually used label paper and added the images I wanted in a photo editing application, then printed the labels. However, I also found these NSC tags that are compatible with inkjet printers and you can print directly to them. So I think I'm going to be using these from now on. It might also be possible to find stickers for your favorite games. I saw vendors on Etsy selling some cool looking ones, but I'm not sure if they will fit on the tags. For real game boxes and cartridges, you can use these NFC stickers and tap the box or cartridge to the reader. If you have any other ideas, let me know in the description. Anyway, that was a quick overview on how the NFC script works. Let's now go over what's needed to accomplish this. The full documentation is on Wizzle's GitHub, but I'll go through the basics. You will need a smartphone with NFC capabilities, along with an app to write NFC tags. The app I use is called NFC Tools and is available for both Android and iOS. You also need to install a script on your Mr. FPGA. A compatible USB NFC reader is required. I use the ACR122U NFC reader. This reader came with tags, but the NFC card wasn't working. The sticker tags that came with it did work though. The current compatible NFC tags are NTAG213, NTAG215, and NTAG216. These tags provide different amounts of storage, with the 213 holding the least and the 216 holding the most. The storage can affect how long the pass to your ROMs can be, so if you have a lot of ROMs stored in multiple subfolders, you may want to get the higher storage cards. Nintendo Amiibos are also supported. I will provide affiliate links to the items I use in the description. Wizzle is working on adding more cards, so check the GitHub page for the latest updates on compatible cards and readers. Now that you know what you need, it's now time to set this up. Let's first install the script on your Mr. FPGA. At the moment, it looks like the script is not yet available through Update All, so you'll have to head over to Wizzle's GitHub page. Download the NFC script, and then copy it to the scripts folder on your Mr. FPGA's SD card. If the script is ever available through Update All, all you have to do to obtain it is enable Wizzle's Mr. Extensions in the Update All script settings. Alternatively, you can add it to Update All yourself if you follow the instructions on Wizzle's GitHub. After the script is installed, 
we are ready to use it. Plug it in the NRC reader to a free USB port on your Mr. FPGA. Boot up the Mr. and head over to the script section. Scroll down to NFC and run it. You are asked if you want to start the NFC service on startup. This is up to you. I personally select yes because I don't want to start it manually every time I boot the Mr. The service will start running. If you notice here, you can see the name of my NFC reader, confirming that it's been detected. You can exit now and start scanning cards. Before we can start scanning cards, we need to write the game paths to them first. The way this is done will be different for arcade and console games, but I will show you both. For arcade games, you will need to obtain the full file name of the arcade's MRA file. You may want to create a text file on your computer where we write all paths for the games we want to write to NFC cards. Okay, so to obtain the paths we need, on the SD card, go into the media slash fat slash underscore arcade folder. You will see all the arcade games installed. You want to copy the full name of the arcade MRA file. For example, here is The Simpsons. You want to copy the full MRA file name. Then paste the text onto the document we plan on sending to the phone. Then add underscore arcade forward slash to the beginning of the file name. I believe the text is case sensitive, so make sure there is a capital A. You must add underscore arcade forward slash all to all arcade file names. If the MRA file is inside a subfolder, then also include the subfolder. Here is another example. If you want to run Street Fighter 2, then copy the Street Fighter 2 MRA file name and paste it onto the text document. Add underscore arcade forward slash to the beginning and repeat the same process for each arcade you want to write to an NFC card. Remembering to add underscore arcade forward slash to the beginning of each file name. That was how you get arcade paths. Let's now see how we get console game paths. There are two methods. The one I prefer uses MGL files. These are files that have all the information it needs to run a game. They allow you to run games without manually loading a core. An easy way to create these files is through the use of Wizzle's remote script or Wizzle's favorite scripts. Check out my video that shows you how to do this on the remote script. I save all my MGL files in a folder called underscore at favorites. So on my SD card, I'll go into that folder which is located in the forward slash media forward slash fat directory. I'll copy the full file name of the MGL file, then paste it onto the document that's holding all the games I want to write to NFC cards. Since this MGL file is in my favorites folder, I have to add underscore at favorites forward slash to the front of the file name. Now let me show you how to use paths that are not MGL files. On your SD card, Go to the location where the ROM is stored. For example, for Genesis ROMs, go into the media slash fat slash games slash Genesis directory. I want to write Sonic the Hedgehog 3 to an NFC card. So I'll copy the full file name of the ROM. Paste it into the document. Then add Genesis forward slash at the start of the file name. This represents the name of the Genesis ROM folder. If the game is a subfolder on that directory, then also add that subfolder. If the game was a Super NES game, then it will be written like this. So basically, you enter the name of the system's Mr. folder that you copy ROMs to, forward slash, and then the ROM name. Note that these paths I'm showing you are relative. They will not only look for games on the SD card, but also find them on a USB drive or the network. Alternatively, if you want to specify an absolute path, you can also do that. Refer to the GitHub page for the full documentation. Zip files are also supported, but they are a bit tricky to add. Zip files are treated as folders, so you will have to add the name of the zip file and the name of the ROM inside the zip file to your path. For example, to create a path to an NES game that's compressed inside a zip file, you type NES forward slash the name of the zip 
forward slash the name of the ROM inside the zip, and you're done. Here's an example for a Genesis ROM. Here's the Genesis folder. Here's the zip file name. And here's the ROM name inside the zip file. If the ROM is located within multiple subfolders inside the zip file, then include those two. Let me also show you how to encode a tag to play a random game, which I find very useful. The text to write an NFC card for playing a random game in your library is star star random colon all. And if you want to randomize a game for a specific console, just use the same text, but instead of typing all, type the console you want to randomize for. For example, if I want to randomize for only Super NES games, then I'll type star star random colon SNES. So we have a document that contains all the paths to the games we want to write to NFC cards. It's time to write these paths. Email the document with the paths to yourself so you have them ready on your phone. Now open up the NFC Tools app on your phone and select the Write tab. Select Add Record, then Text. Copy a game's path from the text file and paste it onto the text box, and then tap OK. Now tap on Write with the size and bytes next to it. You are asked to approach the NFC tag you want to write, so take your NFC tag and tap it to your phone. You should get a write complete message almost instantly. If you get an error, just try again. Now, if you tap the card onto the NFC reader, the game will load. And we're done. You can check the log in the TMP folder in the root of the SD card. There's a file called nfc.log. This file can help you figure out what's going on if something goes wrong. And that's how you set up tags. Again, there's more documentation on Wizzle's GitHub. You can also support Wizzle on Kofi if you appreciate his work. Let me know what you think of the script in the description. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.